Okay. Hello, it's just a friendly, uh, friendly stalker. I better reload just in case this goes wrong. You gotta talk to me? Yep. A well-armed man with a moustache- How can I tell he's got a moustache? <laughs> and glasses stands in your way, guarding the station in front of you. He growls a single word. Password. Yeah, but of course, a password. Well, I know what it is, but should I use my personality just in case? Look, I'm not gonna cause any trouble. Can you let me in on the password? God can't help smiling. Oh, you tramp, you. Uh, just because you're a laugh, I'll let you in for one grand. But this isn't a standard offer. If you don't have the cash, try remembering the password next time. So again. God move society, you can pass. <laughs> Welcome aboard. And some more bullets for my uh, gun. We doesn't have any money though, which is unfortunate. Do I have anything that's around that amount? Oh wow, the stalker's armor is fucking expensive. Oh, this guy's terrible with his money. Great, let us have a little talk and I'll be off. What do you want? What are you guarding? The entrance of the looters base, what else? Hope I don't need to explain to you where we are. Or who we are. Uh, please do, sounds interesting. You really don't know? The looters are a great power in these parts. The one word that best describes a stalker is tramp, and they associate with tramps too. As for us, we get all sorts of people, from crime bosses of the past, to hagglers, to simple thugs, to serious players. That's because we don't rummage through garbage for goods. We're the ones selling anything of value in this city. I see. And why do people need a password to enter? Because you don't need any bottom feeders here. Stalkers let anyone in. It's painful to see the pigs die their place has become. Here you can only enter if you're invited. Seems complicated. Ah, speaking of which, I should be able to find Simon Sherpak here, shouldn't I? Who do you work for? We don't have a ringleader. Like stalkers, I work in the common interest. Interesting. Does people pay you in the common interest? <laughs> Looks like I'm interrogating him, shining a mining light in his eyes. Have you heard anything interesting lately? One of our mates has gone missing, Maxim. I saw him off ages ago, but he never returned. There was a girl with him, a redhead. You can find her somewhere around camp. Then again, he might have returned through the upper entrance. I haven't checked. Who knows? Let's see what's further inside, then. This is, like, nice music for bandit camp. I'd assume it'd be worse for looters. I don't need to use the bathroom. What is this? A sleeper car. Possibly quite literally. What are those? Can I get tattoos here? I thought there was someone standing there, but it's just a mirror. <laughs> oh, yep. So I don't take candy to thieves. Which is funny considering your company. An old grey hair of around 60s digging through a huge cloth bag full of fountain pens, ink bottles, and old fashioned syringes. Noticing you, he smiles and asks. Let's see what you have first. Nope. You here for the tattoo tournament? Want to compete against the best? Want to win big? Or are you here to get yourself a shiny new tattoo from the Ink Master himself, Denisic? Uh, Ink Master Denisic in the flesh. Amazing. I read a lot about you back when I first fell in love with the art of that tattoo, even in pre royal publications. Glad to hear I'm so popular. Well, if you've got the cash, I might just leave you with an eternal memento of my work. No, sorry, but I decided not to get any tattoos. They are too strongly associated with the criminal lifestyle in our culture. I don't want people to think I'm some bandit. Maybe in another life I'd be covered head to toe in ink, but sadly not in this one. Oh, that's a shame. Ah, another victim of stereotypes. I'd like to ask you some questions. I have time to talk. I have time to kill. Let's talk. How did you become a tattoo artist? The old man rolls up his sleeves and displays his hands. They're completely covered in blurry old markings. This kind of ink was used by prisoners before the war to show how long and for what crime they were incarcerated. I'm a thief. An experienced one. I first did time as a kid, two stints for mugging, a third one for robbing an apartment, and the last for selling stolen goods. It's a long story, but each time I got my ass thrown behind bars, I befriended the inmates who were good at inking. I studied their art and practiced on willing prisoners. Eventually I became so good, even the head honchos were lining up to get my work. Practice is the best teacher. Well, in most things, I guess not as a surgeon. In terms of, you know, patient survivability. Is the job well paid? 
I'm plenty happy with the cash I get. Even though there are no more prisons, at least in the pre-war sense, there are plenty of criminals who want to look cool and tough. Every lowly highwayman dreams of becoming a well-respected mobster, and you can't be that without some awesome tats. That's where I get my clientele. And what can you tell me about this place? It's a nice place. It has soul, you know? It may not be the safest shit all around, not the best smelling, but it's got soul, kid. I guess anything is possible. Care to share any interesting stories with me? <laughs> you know, there's a total tale popular with tattoo artists. It's about Sioma Varanok wanting a cool eagle tat on his back. He hired a local artist called Dimas the Handless for his job, but Dimas had never seen an eagle in his life, so he basically tattooed a rooster on Sioma's back. Wattle, comb, and tail. When Sioma saw this masterwork in the mirror, well, what can you say? That day, Dimas the Handless earned his nickname, because Sioma chopped both his hands right off. So this guy was called Handless before or after he lost his hands? Did it such drugs? Even before, it's like the odd axiom. How you name a boat is how she will float. Same goes for people. So just make sure I don't name myself. Oh god, I'm already named a Loman. Well, let's just ignore that. Uh, about that competition. <laughs> Subject can be changed, only tattoos last forever. That's a pretty good side, actually. The old man claps you on the shoulder. I really hope to get a first timer into the tournament. Watching the amazing professionals you've followed all your life isn't what makes these things fun. Anywho, here's the deal. Each contestant, including you, will be given a volunteer to act as a canvas for your tattoos. The creator of the most purity tat will get a fabulous prize. A nice stack of money or a unique tattoo from me personally. You like? Um, why are you even asking my friend to join this tournament? The bet he's never drawn a single tattoo in his life. I don't care about that. I just want to know what he thinks of my proposition. Uh, you didn't ask if I had any experience drawing tattoos? Yo, man shrugs. Who the hell cares? It's actually better if you don't have any experience. I've been in a ton of gigs like this, and the best entries are a shitty line drawing that make everyone piss their fans laughing. <laughs> uh, what can you tell me about the other competitors? Number three. Dobrovid Rabinovich, Herr Melusius, and Mikhail Oval, the local champion. Who would you like to know about? Let's talk about Rabinovich. Dobrovid Rabinovich is a big romantic. He's always using very emotional subjects for his tattoos. His work sometimes brings people to tears, his themes of regret, loss, the hope of meeting loved ones again, unlawful incarceration and such. Don't ask him more details, or this old man's gonna cry. So he's a specialist. And Haik Melusius? Even though Haik looks like a fat old woman in a funny hat, he... Wait. He... Oh, yeah, he's the true... Okay. Even though Hake looks like a fat old woman in a funny hat, he's a true artist at heart. He was a professional painter before the war, and now he paints bodies to make ends meet. Nobody likes fine art around here, but many a crook likes fine ink. And about the oval guy? Mikhail is abandoned with a heart of gold. He never did time before the war, but he sure visited a ton of prisons. He used to play as harmonica for the inmates during our days. Despite not being a criminal himself, he's fixated on prison culture. He tattoos his clients with devils, with communist party leader faces in place of nipples, mutilated militiamen and judges, and all sorts of military religious symbols. That's just how over rolls. Right, and... I'm ready? Wait, am I? I'm not ready to make a decision, let's talk about it later. I kind of want to, I assume they'll be hanging around, I kind of want to speak to them, see whether they have anything first. Oh, is that one of their works? But I will come back for you. No one else further down here. Just go check this room out just in case. Look, I can access that actually. That's pretty cool. But will it actually be useful? That I'm unsure of. Can't access it from the other side, but I'm going to close it for now. I don't know whether there's... Oh, I may have busted it. <laughs> well, I hope there's not enemies coming in from that direction. What's the point in having a fortress gate if it is stuck permanently open? Oh, I was wondering whether that guy was coming over to tell me off. Or shoot me one of the two. I assume it would be the latter. Let's talk to him anyway. A nimble looking black haired man looks around himself with a half smile, puffing at his roll up. He glances occasionally at his watch, an impressive looking bit of technology. This crystal is cracked, but it's still functioning. Noting your approach, the man speaks in a hoarse voice. You know, I know nimble man, but is he that nimble if he's got so many scars? Then why not say Scarface man? Hey, hey, what are you looking for, matey? You looking for Ratchikan? Uh, who the hell's Ratchikan? What do you mean? It's me, of course. I'm Sozik. Sozik Ratchikan. Eh, uh, you're no use. 
The man calling himself saw as Ratchet can't add some under his breath. But it's fine, you bastard. You can't even send me a messenger. Ugh. The man turns his attention back to you. Okay, what do you want? Uh, I have a message for you. Wait, actually, you're waiting for someone, aren't you? Zorzik scratches his head, wondering how he ended up giving away so much information. None of your business. Come on, brother. Trust me. Then making a few quiet calculations in his head, the man shrugs. You've convinced him he can trust you. I got involved with a guy calling himself Boatswain. He knew some brain box intruder grad, an amateur radio operator who was selling an incredible direction finder. This thing could locate a stalker radio within a hundred kilometer radius and was accurate to within one meter. Okay, now that sounds useful. Can you imagine how much loop my small squad of land buccaneers could earn with such a device? Land buccaneers. A lot, uh, presume, but something went wrong? Long story short, I borrowed money from everyone I could, including some really creepy guys. I gave my money to the bro Boatsway and the sent him to Trudegrad to purchase one of these contraptions. Once he was on his way, I started gathering a new team. But Boatsway vanished. There was no news from him for a week. Then he sent me a letter that the Trudegrad geek had moved to the Novgorod Scientific Society. There was no news from him for a week. Then he sent me a letter that the Trudegrad geek had moved to the Novgorod Scientific City. A little later, a caravan from the Belovez Wasteland delivered a note from him saying he was on his way back. It's been a month now since I've heard from him. I have no money. The threats will start coming soon. It's a shitty situation, frankly. I don't want to talk about it anymore. Uh, okay. I have a message for you anyway. Before you can think of a way to pass Gosha Drag's mysterious message to its addressee, Zorzik Ratchikan grabs the crumpled paper from your hands and spreads it out to read. Well, this is my mum's name. This is her village. Ratican jolts stiffly upright as if electrocuted and snatched an old M712 from his elastic waistband. He turns his wrist 90 degrees to point the gun at your head, eyes bulging. He then starts screaming, sputtering and shaking. Oh, what, eh? What now, tough guy? You know my mum's address. Well, fucking done, asshole. You know her name and where she lives. But how are you going to hurt her if I execute you here now, huh? The little exchange does not go unnoticed. The looters are all looking at you in a mixture of fear and surprise. They're sure as hell not going to like it if you start a gunfight in the middle of their base. Uh, don't. <laughs> like how you will, Eagle Hawk Strike! Snatch the gun from his hands. I don't think I could do that. He's probably going to shoot me in the face. Fall to your knees. Um, wait, I have nothing to do with it. Go to the dragon. Your brother asked me to give this to you. The rage evaporates from Roger Khan's face in the blink of an eye. He lowers his hands and begins to breathe normally. Go to the dragon, you say? That saved me from a brother like him. There are no rats in my family. But I owe more money to him than anyone else, and this is exactly like him to use such threats. He found out where my mum lives and thought it'd be a good idea to blackmail me, eh? Well, the psychics love a hard time when instead of an old lady, they bump into me with Dad's Kalashnikov. If only I can get there in time. The man thinks hard, then brings his palm to his forehead with a dull slap. No, I'll never make it. His goons are probably already loafing around Azerki already, waiting for his orders. Shit. Okay. Tell the spasses I got the message. I'll get him his money. I have one last option. I hope we won't have to resort to this, but what can you do? I wish you'd choke on his filthy rubles. Hey, I didn't know. Don't shoot the messenger. Well, that happens. I better go now. Wait. As a firearms aficionado, I can't help but wonder why you were holding your pistol sideways. It's an old Chinese trick I learned from some Guangzhou caravaneers. The Mauser M712 recoil is backing up, so if you hold it sideways when shooting, you can quickly adjust your aim for the next target. I could blow your brains out, and the next moment my gun would be focused right between the eyes of your chum. If you had any chums here, that is. Well, they are standing behind me. Ratchet can spread his arms to include all the looters walking around the base. Alright, see you. The Chinese trick has taught you something about your favourite type of weapon. But that's a rifle. <laughs> Ratchikan, no! Hmm. Maybe I can help. You don't seem like a bad sort. Loot base isn't as bad as I thought. I look kind of cool, actually, with the uh, the minor helmet. I think it suits more than the military helmet for this. I really look like a scavenger. <laughs> Sweet. A tough guy in dirty work clothes silently watches the fire. Sometimes he turns away to throw another chair leg into the flames. Hey, those things quite literally don't grow on trees anymore. Nice fire you got going. The man shudders and looks at you. Huh? Oh yeah. What you doing here? You a stalker? Me? No, I'm no stalker. Me and the boys here, we help stalkers and looters clear collapsed passages into, into ruins and stuff like that. Hmm. I wonder whether I can use him to help me clear like train carts and passages from the underground. Job pays well? We cope. Dead city has so many ruins people need access to. We always get new orders. Quality knuckle duster. 
Where are you boys now? The man shrugs. Oh, fine now. One of them was killed by that fucking woodpecker serial killer guy last month, so they're drinking in his honor ever since. Don't worry. If I give them the signal, they'll quickly jump to the opportunity and we'll clear, we'll clear all the rubber you want cleared. Hmm. Answer any questions? Nah, I'm not feeling like it. Sorry. Huh. Maybe I have to get woodpecker first and then he'll clear some rubble? That's even if he can do that. You, the redhead. You're the one who's... I assume you're the redhead anyway. Yep. A tall redheaded woman of about 25 greets you with a pleasant smile. She stands out somewhat among her grumpy colleagues, but she's obviously comfortable in, her com in their company, as if they were good pals, if not the closest of friends. Hi, I'm Agatha. Did you... Wait, you're the second person I've called, Matt called Agatha. Did you by any chance explore the metro? And did you see Maxim there? He's short, lean, and swarthy. Likes to call himself a stalker. Uh, no, I've never met him. Is there a problem? The woman heaves a deep sigh and slowly shakes her head. If you're ever down in the metro, take a look around, would you? We went down in the tunnels a week ago and never came back. Uh, what kind of man is he? The woman smiles dreamily. <laughs> I don't know. It's true that he's a gangster, but he's still a good guy. He's like a little brother to me, or a cute little puppy who always follows you around. He's probably in love with me. I don't see him as a husband or boyfriend material, of course, but I care for him like a friend. Uh, where exactly did he disappear? I get to take some metro map from your hands and points out a small side tunnel. He's heading somewhere around here. There's nothing there, though. Even stalkers don't visit these places. I keep my eyes open. It's another thing I want to ask. Who are you? I believe I told you already. I'm Agatha. Like Agatha Christie? <laughs> Very original. I can barely contain my laughter. Uh, I'm asking you seriously. Are you Agatha Christie, the famous British mystery writer of the early 20th century? Or aren't you? I don't get how some people can be so clueless. <laughs> uh, I'm not her. You do realize that she... Crap! I would have asked for your autograph. On the other hand, I'm glad you're not her. She died, like, what, over 50 years ago? <laughs> people are strange. <laughs> yes, you are, Alexander. Uh, nice to meet you. What are you doing here? The woman surveys the gathering and smiles cunningly. What is everyone doing here? I'm loafing around, just like the rest of them. I see. And what is this place? A former metro station, and now a huge underground common room for all sorts of rascals. I see. Uh, care to share any stories with me? I went out for several nights in a row to look around, and you know what I noticed? A red dot in the sky. The Hesperus star seems to be growing steadily bigger and brighter all the time. Weird. You keep mentioning that. I should I be concerned? A grey-haired but not yet old man in a clean, nicely fitted suit is sitting at a table looking bored. He's doodling something with his finger in the condensation covering his beer glass. Ah, huh, cold beer can still be found in the metro, I guess. You notice the pattern in what he's drawing. It starts with a long straight line ending in a triangle. He then adds another half triangle to the first one. The final image looks like a triangle half stuffed into the other like a cork of some sort. Hmm. That's not a beaut. Goal, is it? A muted bugle? Possibly? Yeah, that would be a muted bu bugle, wouldn't it? Uh, the silence. So he's one of the postmen then? Yeah, triangle on a end of a straight line with another triangle stuffed into it. I assume so. The man looks up and smiles widely, almost as if he's waiting. Yeah, this guy's definitely a postman. He already knows more than he seems to be letting on. Look at that. The attention to detail, though. The back of his portrait is literally that thing there. That's... It never ceases to amaze me. Hey, hey, comrade, why so dusty? Coming back to some dirty ruin, right? Go on, you can tell me. Don't be shy. Oh, oh, he insulted you, my sweet child, and yet it is I who feels the sting of his words. What sort of a father am I to have such a dirty, dusty child? Such a dirty boy. Dirty, dirty pig boy. <laughs> Shut up, Exigen. That was not actually an insult. I simply remarked that he's some dust in his clothes. It was a funny opening to our dialogue. No need to take offense. Uh... Yeah, that's about right. I do love ruins, catacombs, and all that gritty good stuff. Ooh, oh, no. Press the wrong button. I'm not even that dusty. I keep my clothes right neat. It's apparently what I said. <laughs> Mine rearranges his glasses and examines you more closely. Yes, yes, of course. Just wishful thinking on my part, I'm afraid. I'm just waiting, hoping for a ruined stalker to come so I could hire him for a little venture into a dead city. Uh, maybe I can help. What's the job? The man nods a few times and jerks his chair close to you without standing up. He starts by saying the following whilst nervously drumming his fingers on the table. A certain hospital was left strangely intact after the bombings all those years ago. 
Uh, did that certain hospital have a little metal crate with healing symbols all over the side of it? There are no doctors here, of course, only monsters and bones, but the building itself is safe to explore. My business partner really, really needs a certain gizmo that might still be found in that old clinic. Would likely be in the operating room, or maybe locked up in the basement storage area. Every city clinic had one of these thing. Uh, had a, every city clinic had a few of these things in the last years before the war. A thing called the Morosco Portable Storage Freezer, or just the Morosco. Looks like a small suitcase with three multicolored vials of chemicals on the inside and a Soap MedTech logo on the outside. Uh, what are the chemicals? Is the thing is this thing dangerous? No, not at all. It was used to transport donor organs to patients over long distances without the need for a whole freezer truck. Pre-war medicine made a huge leap before it all went to hell, you know. Heartbroken? We'll get you a new one. Liver fell from all that pesky alcohol that keeps sneaking into your system? <laughs> get a chance then and drink up. The chemicals in the case are for slowing down cell death in the organ as it's moved between hospitals. And why would you need such a thing? I don't. My business partner does. He's planning on opening a hospital. Yeah, such a great guy he is. You can't even imagine. The man takes off his glasses and starts cleaning them with a small rag. And why can't you go dumpster diving yourself? Five years ago, I would have. And we wouldn't be having this talk. But my body isn't what it used to be, so I have to buy labour as someone else's labour, capitalist style. I remember that. If I see a gizmo like the one you described, I'll return. Great, now buy for a thousand rubles, deal? Of course it's the deal. You already told me you'll look for it. I have every confidence in you. Change the subject. Hold on. Other suitcase. Oh, do I not have it in my personal inventory? I might see whether... Um, which one of you has it, Alexander? There it is. Yeah. Um, I might see whether I can sell it to that woman who's interested in curiosities before giving it to this guy. Obviously, it would be nice, but... I don't know if he's open in a hospital. But the guy isn't the most trustworthy by the sound of things, especially if he's one of the, you know... The, uh, what are they called? The bugle guys, whatever they're called. About the suitcase you wanted me to find. Actually, I want to ask a few questions. Always glad to lend an ear. What's on your mind? I uh, wish you'd tell me your name. Ah, right. My name's Valentine, but everyone just calls me Valya. Valya Satanovsky. Satanovsky? Oh, I guess Satanov. <laughs> that sounds concerning. What are you doing here? I was once a government worker, a postman. Oh, yeah, there we go. Now I'm delivering packages again, but not the useless crap like postcards. I find rare objects for powerful people. Well, I sometimes I'm sent after something I never even knew existed. But let's not talk shop, okay? And what are you doing here? Oh. Uh, what can you tell me about this place? In the old days, you used to call places like this a den of thieves. I agree with that assessment wholeheartedly, although we're lacking in quality hookers and like a real den. I wish there were more hookers in the waste in general. This dude just named the biggest problem of this world. These ways are rotten to the core, but they still don't have enough hookers. How long will my involuntary celibacy last, God? <laughs> oh, come now, young man. You really have the same problem as the old fool before you? When I was your age, I was swimming in pussy. I tell you, I couldn't beat them back with a cudgel. There's more innocent time back then. Women didn't have such high standards. You get me, or do I need to snap your neck so you can finally understand my suffering, huh? Huh? Hey, no need to get physical comrade celibacy. We're both men of culture, aren't we? <laughs> Jesus Christ. And can you share something interesting with me? One guy I met made me think about the Dilatop Pass incident again for some reason. What a mysterious occurrence that was. It happened back in 1959. A group of young, healthy, experienced hikers were found dead on a trip to the Northern Urals. Even now, the deaths seem weird to me. But back in the day, it was the talk of the whole Soviet Union. Why did they die? How? Everyone has their own version. Want to hear my own theory? I think the snowmen got them. Snatched right out of their tents during the blizzard. An ancient race of homicidal albino gorilla men stuck out against humanity that fateful night. We never avenged those poor kids. It's an interesting theory. I'm going to walk away. Is that Simon? Where was I just ignoring you? <laughs>